In this video, we are going to learn about law of returns to scale. Now, law of returns to scale operates in the long run. Unlike law of variable proportions which operates in the short run, this law operates in the long run and hence we are able to change all the inputs used in the production process. Now law of returns to scale explains how output behaves in response to a proportionate change in all the inputs okay, used in the production process. So in the long run to increase the output we may change all the factors of production in same proportion or by different proportion. Okay. So, suppose we have an initial level of input that is L and K. This is our initial level of input and our output suppose is Q. Okay. So, this is how our production function will look where Q will be equal to function of L and K. Now, if we increase all the inputs that is if we increase the labor and capital by the same proportion that is A. Okay, suppose we increase the labor and capital by same proportion A, we will obtain a new level of output and a new production function where Q dash will be equal to function of AL and AK, where Q dash is obviously going to be more than our previous output because we have increased both the inputs in same proportion that is A. So, there are three stages in law of returns to scale. Let us try to understand those stages with the help of first um, schedule and then a curve. Okay, We have two inputs that we use in the production process that is labor and capital. Initially, we have used two units of labor and five units of capital which is giving us a total product of 50. Now what do we do? Suppose we increase both the units, both the inputs by same proportion that is we double both the inputs. We see that the change in output is more than the change in input. When we further double the inputs, we see that the proportionate change in output is again more than the proportionate change in input. This stage is referred to as increasing returns to scale. Okay. Further, when we double the input from 8 to 16 and 20 to 40, we see that the output has also doubled. When proportionate change in input and proportionate change in output are equal, this stage is called constant returns to scale. Okay, and this stage when increase in, in output when proportionate increase in output is less than proportionate increase in input this stage is called decreasing returns to scale decreasing returns to scale now we will try to understand the three stages of law of returns to scale with the help of this graph as well see in this graph we have labor units on x-axis and the capital units used in production on y-axis and this is an isoquant curve which shows us all the possible combinations that produce the same output suppose q q is the output that is produced on all the possible combinations on this isoquant curve okay so initially when we have one unit of capital and one unit of labor the output produced is q Suppose we increase both the inputs by, by same proportion, okay, we double both the inputs. So what do we see? We see that now when we have increased both the inputs by same proportion, our output has also doubled. It has changed from Q to 2Q. This is called constant returns to scale. When proportionate change in input 
is equal to proportionate change in output. When input was doubled, output is also doubled. This is called constant returns to scale. Sometimes increase in output is less than the increase in input. That could be a situation of decreasing returns to scale. Decreasing returns to scale where increase in output is less than increase in input. And there could also be a situation in which the increase in output is more than the increase in input. So this situation will be, this will be a stage of increasing returns to scale. So this is how you can show with the help of an isoquant the law, the three stages of law of returns to scale. Okay, now we will try to know the reasons behind this increasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale and decreasing returns to scale. First cause for increasing returns to scale can be technical and managerial indivisibilities. See, in easy language, there are many inputs which are used in the production process. For example, plant and machinery, land, management, okay. These inputs are available in large and lumpy units. Okay, and to suit our small scale of production, we cannot divide these units. Okay, we have a complete plant and machinery available, we have large land available, we have a huge management available. Okay, and if we have a small scale of production, we cannot divide this. These are always completely employed. So, when we increase our production initially, these inputs can be utilized in a better way which leads to an increase in the scale of production and thus they give an increasing returns to scale. Okay, then next is specialization of labor. When we increase the scale of production, we can use special machines for each specific task and we can use special labors and expert labors and expert management for different tasks which are performed during the production process. Okay. Then next is constant returns to scale. See, economies of scale is a situation in which the increase in scale of production gives certain, certain benefits to the producer. And when the economies of scale are exhausted and the diseconomies of scale are yet to start, there is a short phase of constant returns to scale. There is one more way in which we can get constant returns to scale. For example, we may double the output by setting up two plants which use the same quality and same type of workers, raw materials, machinery. We have doubled our output by, double, by setting up another plant, by setting up another factory, by setting up another firm. Okay. So, that's, so this can also be a reason for uh, constant returns to scale. The reason for decreasing returns to scale. Number one is complexity of management. When there is large scale of production and when there is huge management, huge management, what happens? There can be a problem of red tapeism or there can be a problem of lengthy chain of communication. This might also cause confusion between the top management and the men on production line. Another cause of decreasing returns can be limitations of natural resources.